Hey, welcome back to another video. I'm Ivan Calderon, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make beats faster. So today we're talking about something that has made a world of a difference to my workflow when making beats and when creating music in general, and that is templates. Templates are easy to brush over because they're not as exciting as say, new mixing techniques or new sounds, but the irony is that having things like new techniques or new sounds means nothing if you can't use them effectively and maximize your studio productivity. I started using templates a few years back and primarily because I wanted to reduce the amount of obstacles, the friction between a musical idea and a finished product. See, we use technology every day to create our music, but we all know too well that it could also get in the way. I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling super inspired, the last thing that I want to do is be tweaking parameters, finding the right plugins, or setting up proper bus routing. Personally, I would much rather get straight to work by laying down my idea before I lose it, and then come back later to tweak things if need be. Now, things will never go 100% as planned, but what I have found is that having something like a template does in fact help in reducing a lot of these musical obstacles helps me get to work faster and ultimately helps me create more music so today I'm gonna be showing you guys my personal production template and hopefully after watching this video you too will be able to start making beats and music a lot faster but all right jumping into studio one I'm gonna show you guys from top to bottom the tracks that I have the things that I use to create my beats now starting off the first one you'll see is a track titled sample now the sample track is essentially just an empty audio track that I've labeled sample for cases and scenarios where I want to bring in some sort of loop or a sample chop to make my beat out of. Now the most common way to use a sample when making a beat would be to upload it to say a machine or an NPC and chop it up that way on the pads. Personally for me however, I'm more of a visual person. I have to see it in front of me so that is exactly why I do things this way. So essentially if I ever want to work with a sample, then all I do is just drag and drop that audio file into this empty sample track and inside Studio One is where I do all of my cuts and my edits. Moving down, we have our first two MIDI instruments. The first one is Scalar. I've talked about Scalar so much, I feel like now, but it is literally one of my favorite, um, I guess, plugins, VSTs that I've purchased in the past six to 12 months. I don't make a beat without it. If you wanna see the full review of this, I'm gonna link it up top here, but essentially that sits here and I'll show you guys how I use that in a minute. And then below it, I have a piano, a grand piano from Nexus. Now, the reason that I have a piano as my first MIDI instrument, my first VST, is that as opposed to something like a synth, a piano lets me hear chords a lot clearer and helps me create chord progressions a lot easier. Now, because this is MIDI at the end of the day, if I don't wanna keep that piano part, I can always just take that MIDI pattern and put it into a different instrument and kind of continue layering that way. But at least for me, every time that I start a beat, I always, always start with a piano. Now, in the cases that I get stuck and I just don't know what to play, that's when Scalar comes in. And I really, really love the, I guess, synergy between these two plugins because essentially what I do is I use the sound of whatever VST I'm using, so in this case, Nexus, and I route that or import that into Scalar. So let me show you how that works. If I bring up Scalar and I press a key on my keyboard, you hear the sound from Nexus, but you also get the information, all the benefits from Scalar. So again, that's a B, that's a G major chord, that's an A minor, and this way I can use both of them to kind of create progressions and create chords if I ever get stuck. Now I love Scalar, but at the end of the day, their native sounds are not that good. So if I were to mute my piano, my uh, Nexus, and I bring in the native sound from, from Scalar, this is it. It's not bad, but it's very, very tinny. Nothing like a Nexus or nothing like a, say, a Keyscape. And on top of that, if you ever wanna bring in another instrument that's not a piano, maybe like a synth or something like that, you can route it this way and always be able to know what notes or what chords you're playing. Now, the way to do this, if you want to do it with your own VSTs, is simply bring in Scalar, load it up there. What you wanna do is first turn off the native sound, and that's by pressing this little uh, speaker button, top right. So you click on that. Then what you want to do is bring in your VST of choice. So again, for me, this would be Nexus. And then from there, what you want is under where it says inputs, it'll say none at first, but you want to go ahead and select your scalar. So once you select scalar, then what you want to do is make sure that the speaker on both is turned on. So right now only scalar is turned on. I'm going to turn on the piano here and then I get the sound from my VST, 
but I get the benefits of Scalar. And again, this is just to kind of help me create any progressions or chords in the case that I might find myself stuck and have a little bit of beat block. Now, moving down from these two, the next two tracks that I have on my template are two empty MIDI tracks. Now, I gotta be honest, these two tracks serve very little purpose because in Studio One, at least, it is super, super user-friendly and everything is drag and drop. So if I wanted to bring in a new VST, all I really have to do is go over to my browse folder and literally just drag and drop it. And it's that easy. But I guess for the sake of aesthetics, um, you don't really need these, but I use them just to kind of do the same thing. So just drag and drop and there you go. You don't have to have these tracks there if you don't want to. I personally just like seeing them there, but at the end of the day, you know, it's up to you. You could always just drag and drop if that's something that suits your style a little bit better. Now, of course, you don't have to just have two. You could always just do more, but I like to start out with two because I know that I'm going to be layering. I'm going to be having at the end of the day, at least two to four melodic sounds in my instruments folder. Finally, I put all of these into its own folder called instruments. And the way to do that in Studio One is you want to highlight all of the tracks that you want in your folder, right click and go down to where it says pack folder. That will effectively put them into kind of this little file here and you can name it whatever you want. Now moving on to the drums, the first two instruments that I have are two basses. Now basses for me at least are part of the drum section and your perspective, your view on this might differ because they are technically an instrument. But if you think about what a bass does, it aids the drums in supplementing the rhythmic section. So that's why I put these down here. But in any case, the first bass, the first VST that I have here is called Bass Master by Loop Masters. Again, I've reviewed this, so I'm gonna link it up top here. But essentially, I use this plugin whenever I want to create like gritty, really fat synthetic, like Drake underwater type basses, because it's really, really good for that. Moving down, the next bass, the next VST that I have is called Moto Bass by IK Multimedia. And it is really, really great for those live sounding bass emulation. So let me show you guys an example. Now, aside from it sounding really, really good, the other reason why I love this plugin so much is because of all the parameters you get to tweak. So if you look in the middle, for example, I can tell it where I want to pick the notes. I can choose closer to the pickups, closer to the neck, closer to the bridge. I can also tell it if I want any notes uh, to be palm muted. I could also select the playing style. So say finger, pick, slap. And again, there's so many, so many parameters to get the exact sound that you want. So this one is really, really great. Moving on down, we have an 808 loaded into my Sample 1 XT. Now, 808s need no introduction. You guys know what they are. They are indispensable to urban music. And if I ever need to use one, this one here is readily available. Now, in case you're wondering, the reason that I have the 808 loaded into Sample 1 is because that way it spreads it across the keyboard and I'm able to play it with my MIDI keyboard. Now, last but not least, we have my machine and this is where I have have all my drums loaded. Now, the way that I use my machine is that I basically just use it for the pads. I route it as a MIDI instrument into Studio One and then designate a specific track for each pad. And that way I'm able to isolate the sounds as soon as they come in. I've done a tutorial on my channel on how to do this. So I'm gonna link that up top here. But essentially what happens now is I load up some of my favorite drums into the pads. Now it doesn't mean that I'm always going to use them, but like I said in the beginning, this just kind of helps me get the idea out. And again, because it's MIDI, if I ever need to switch anything out, it is super, super simple. Now, an important thing to note here is that you don't have to use machine, obviously, if you don't have it. If you want to do something like this, you could always use Studio One's native drum sampler, which is Impact. So let me bring that up here for you guys. You could always just load your drum samples here and then do it that way. Alternatively, you could always just bring in a bunch of different instances of sample one and then load them each with your drum one shot. So let's say for example, this would be kick. The, another one would be snare, another one would be hi-hats and so on and so forth. Now, if you only have Studio One, then of course you have those two options, Sample One or Impact. If you have Machine, then obviously this is also an option and I love to use Machine, but now at least you have three different ways to route your drums. Okay, so the last part to my production template are two plugins in my mixer. The first one is a stock tuner from Studio One and I have that one placed over the 808 track. Now, the reason for this is because you always want to tune your 808s the 808 that I have now in my Sample 1 XT is already tuned, but if I ever want to swap that out for something else, I don't know if that one's going to be tuned, so I just I use this tuner to make sure that it is. Super, super important. So that's 
stays there. The other plugin is an auto key uh, by Antares. Now I've done a review on this, so I'm gonna link it up top as always. But essentially what I do is I use this to determine the key of a sample if I ever decide to use one. So the way it works is I bring in a sample as always, I drop it into my sample track, I turn on my auto key, I let it play, and then this is gonna tell me what key the sample is in, and that way I'm able to layer properly. But those two are always here, the tuner and the 808, and then the auto key on the master bus. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, if it helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, but I'll see you on the next one.